I'm Anil Kumar. Here is a very important question to review concepts of functions which will be applied in your curriculum for calculus. Given f of x equals to 1 over x plus x, g of x equals to x plus 5 divided by x plus 2, find f of g, write its domain and range. So it is function of function, right? So when you say find f of g, basically we are trying to find what is f of g of x, right? So that is what we are trying to find. Now we have f of x as 1 over x plus x and g of x is x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. So we can replace this here, right? So we can get f of g of x is the rational function x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. And now we can replace this for the function itself, right? So now we can write this as f of x is 1 over x, that means 1 over this quantity. 1 over this quantity will be x plus 2 over x plus 5, and then plus x, plus the same thing, which is x plus 5 over x plus 2. So that is what you get. Now you can always simplify this, taking common denominator, which will be x plus 5 times x plus 2. So this gets multiplied. So you get x plus 2 whole square plus you get x plus 5 whole square, right? So this is what you get. Now from here, you can always see that the restrictions for the functions are that it cannot be equal to minus 5 and minus 2. Well, let us, uh, we can go a step further. Simplifying this, uh, we could write this as x squared plus 4x plus 4, expanding the first part, and then x squared plus 10x uh, plus 25 divided by, uh, never expand denominator, make this a rule, okay? So I'm not expanding denominator. Now let me just uh, do one more step of simplification, write it right there. And then we'll look into domain and range of this function, right? So, so we have f of g as equals to x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 4x plus 10x is 14x. 4 plus 25 is 29 divided by uh, x plus 5 times x plus 2, right? So we have done the first part of writing the function f of g. Now let's look into domain and range. Now domain of the function is, it has two restrictions, right? So, so domain is x belongs to real numbers, where x is not equal to 5, I mean minus 5, and x is not equal to minus 2. Since these two values will make the denominator 0, and you cannot divide by 0. Right? So that is easier to write, domain. It is difficult to get the range from the function at present. But what you can do is, with some knowledge, you can actually sketch. So you may have to review uh, sketching techniques of functions. Uh, but what I'll do here is give you overall view. What we see here is that we have two restrictions, x equals to minus 5 and minus 2 will result into vertical asymptotes, right? So these are the vertical asymptotes, which will be at uh, 2 and 5 minus, right? Okay, so these are my vertical asymptotes. So my drawings, as usual, are not to the scale, but they are fairly accurate to understand the concept. You'll also notice here that the degree of numerator and denominator is same, x square and x square. In that case, we'll have horizontal asymptote, right? So uh, let's make a note of this. You can look into some of my videos to understand why, right? So uh, if x is approaching infinity, very large quantity, these terms will be small. So x squared, x squared will dominate. So y value will approach 2, right? So y approaches 2, right? This is what we say horizontal asymptote, right? Okay, even when um, x approaches 
minus infinity, y will approach uh, 2, since square will make it positive. Do you see that? So there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 2. Horizontal asymptote really means that x will never, y value will never be 2, but it will approach, right? So from the range, this value, 2, is missing, correct? This is one part. Now the second part to understand here is that within this interval, within this interval, we can have a local maximum, which should be right in the center of these. So without into getting into details, uh, what we can do is we can find the value of the center point. The center point here is average of minus 5 and minus 2. So when you add and divide by 2, you get minus 3.5. Is that okay? So minus 3.5 is local minimum in this case, right? So what we can do is we'll find the value of this function. Let me call this as uh, capital F. Let me call this function as capital F x okay so at minus 3.5 so you can use calculator to calculate this value right so i'll just substitute minus 3.5 in my equation so we get 2 and uh, within brackets minus 3.5 square plus 14 times minus 3.5 plus 29 that's the numerator right and then we'll divide this by, uh, we are replacing x by 3.5 minus. So I'll divide this by, let me put two brackets, right? So one is 5 minus 3.5 and the other one is 2 minus 3.5, correct? Okay? And then we close these brackets and say equal to. So we get a value of minus 2. Do you see that? So we just calculated and found a value of minus 2. That is to say, we have a local maximum here at minus 2. So if you uh, sketch this graph, you kind of get this value as this, right? So, so I'm not getting into details of sketching this particular function. But what I'm trying to say here is you can have some values which are greater than minus, I mean, less than minus 5. And when you substitute those values here, and then take some more points and slightly more information is required to sketch, you will notice that the function will have all the values of y except for those between these. Correct? So from here, we can actually write that the range of the function, let me write range of f of x is equal to y belongs to real numbers, right? All real numbers, where y is greater than the asymptote 2 and y is less than equal to minus 2 in this case. This our, our calculation showed it, right? So that is how you could get range of this function. Well, I didn't really get into details of sketching. We'll have another video on sketching such functions. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that gives you some idea. And the links on this video will help you understand the concept of sketching such rational functions. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best. Um, just uh, to give you an idea, this graph will be kind of like this, right? So we get these values. If I place x equals to 0, you can calculate the y-intercept, right? And similarly, some more points will help you. Also, finding nature of the graph near the asymptote so if you have a value close to minus 2 from both the sides, from the right side, it will approach positive infinity. From the left side, it approaches negative infinity. Likewise, you can analyze uh, the asymptote near minus 5 also, right? Again, I'm not really getting into the details of sketching this at the moment. Uh, go through my videos whose link has been provided here, which will give you all the concepts. So this is the review which will help you to understand the concepts and move forward with calculus. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that really helps. Thank you and all the best.